Hey guys, my name is Shy, and this is a pick a card reading where I am tuning into Jupiter to bring through some messages. And you're welcome to go straight to your reading. It's cards numbers one, two, and three, and the cards are down in the description box or the timestamps. Or you can hang out with me for a moment longer and listen to me ramble a little bit about Jupiter because some of you might have heard me say before that Jupiter is the typically the most difficult planet for me to tune into, that I don't really have a relationship with Jupiter and that I don't really feel his transits or really kind of get anything when I try to tune in. <laughs> um, that has been true until literally yesterday where <laughs> everything got completely blown out of the water. So yesterday, um, I mean, this is a timeless reading. This is absolutely timeless for whenever you, you see this, but yesterday Jupiter moved into Aries and that is huge. That is a massive, that, that is the beginning of the, the Jupiter's of Jupiter's year, right? Jupiter takes 12 years to go around the sun and when Jupiter enters Aries, that is that is the Jupiter New Year. This is a whole new cycle of expansion and higher spirituality and abundance. And <laughs> I had such an intense experience at the moment that Jupiter moved Jupiter moved into Aries. Um it was like a DNA activation and a massive psycho spiritual purging experience like it was one of those moments where you know it was like a whole day I was I was in bed for an entire day with really severe ascension symptoms like I was very sick I couldn't you know leave the bedroom or the bathroom I, I was <laughs> that was it I was sick I was in and out of consciousness um all kinds of crazy stuff happened <laughs> and I realized I was like wow um I have been unaware of my a relationship with Jupiter and this is very interesting because I feel like all a lot of the things that Jupiter represents I have sometimes felt lacking in my life right um sometimes feeling lacking in abundance sometimes feeling restricted sometimes feeling like I can't figure out the way forward, right? And I feel like Jupiter is a beautiful um, energy that is an antidote to these issues that I have struggled with in my life. And it has been playing out behind the scenes in a way that I just never really noticed before. I was never really noticing Jupiter's energy. It's not that I wasn't tuned into it, it's that I literally wasn't noticing it. And for me personally, this might be because I just realized I have Jupiter retrograde in my birth chart. So there's like a little clue here about um, your retrograde planets in your birth chart, your relationship with them it can, can be hidden, it can be internal, it can be inside of you, but that doesn't mean it's not there. It means that it's, you have to go deep within to find that energy because it doesn't necessarily show up in this big obvious way around you. It's this subtle movement inside of you. So I just wanted to take a moment to highlight how interesting the Jupiter cycle is, this 12-year cycle. And it's super interesting. If you want to get into it, you can look it up where you find out how the global, like global economics is super tied to Jupiter transits. <laughs> Everything how, you know, like when Jupiter moves into Capricorn, there's typically like a market crash, you know, Jupiter moved into Capricorn in 2008 and 2020. What does that tell you, right? Um, it's so interesting. So and beyond that, it's interesting to pay attention to the 12-year cycle in your life. Like whenever you read this, think about what happened 12 years ago and how the, the whole last 12 years has been this long cycle. So wherever Jupiter is right now, you don't have to be watching this at the time of Jupiter moving into Aries. You can be watching this whenever. Um, Jupiter is always going through this 12-year cycle and you can pay attention to that in your life. And it gives you this... Um, very interesting like medium term cycle to pay attention to with the ebb and flow of your life. And I think the other thing I just want to toss out there before I get to the cards is Jupiter, right? We, we learn when, when you first start reading about the planets, the first thing you learn is that Jupiter is about expansion. And like, obviously, yes, that is the case, but I don't feel that Jupiter is about this unbridled expansion. It's not like, like just massive, continuous, uncontrollable growth because it is also the energy of the temperance card, right? And of Sagittarius energy. And so it, it's not temperance in terms of, you know, like people say te temperance back when there was temperance when like alcohol was illegal, right? It's not that type of temperance. And it's it's not exactly balance because that's more like Libra, right? I feel like Jupiter, Sagittarius um, and 
like ninth house energy are slightly and like the temperance energy of the tarot the temperance tarot card is slightly misunderstood um it's temperance to me this is how i understand it it's it's temperance in terms of um folding in the extremes folding in extremes nothing is lost but the extreme manifestations are tucked in so that the core can become stronger it is this forged in fire the core becoming stronger always 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 like the blade the blacksmith plunging the blade into the oil after it was hot it gets hot 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 and then it is plunged into cold oil to be tempered to be quenched and to be cured to be made strong and flexible right so it is turning things that are taking something that is brittle, right? This Jupiter energy, it takes something that is brittle and it takes something that is raw and it tempers it in fire, making it centered and making it flexible. It actually makes it more flexible, which makes it, you know, you might think that, oh, it's better to be hard and brittle, but really if you are <laughs> a little bit softer and more flexible, that actually makes you stronger, right? So that is the type of Jupiter, Ju Jupiterian, I don't even know how to say that. This is the type of Jupiter expansion that I really feel, right? It's about making you more centered, more flexible, and that does include trimming the hedges, so to speak, right? I really feel like I keep seeing, you know, trimming your trees. If you have trees in your backyard, you know that you have to trim the trees every year in order for them to grow big and strong and lush. If you don't trim the trees, they don't grow as well. It is, it is like sad as it sometimes is to really prune a tree back, <laughs> like if you've ever grown up around trees right you know that when you prune the tree and sometimes if you really 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 go at the tree like really pruning at it really hard and then sometimes you're sad going wow that tree really took a beating I really cut it back a lot it grows back bigger more beautiful and healthier than ever so that is the energy of Jupiter that I am really just starting to tune into now and that I'm using as the kind of foundation of this reading and so I think those are my footnotes for my thoughts on Jupiter let's get to the readings Okay, card number one. I don't know what's under here yet. And I keep seeing the the red spot, right? The red storm, the red storm. Are you guys in a red storm? <laughs> Earth. Nurture nature wow um it's interesting i haven't even flipped the card yet but i was so drawn to get this beyond lemuria card and it's this this i mean this is a woman right this is a woman with roots going deep roots going deep roots going deep all the way into the earth and interestingly if you can see on the card she's actually above the earth her roots come all the way down to the earth because she is centered somewhere in the higher realms and then it's like these this peacock feather art coming up out of her crown coming up out of her crown expanding into the sky and for me to be seeing like the, the Jupiter red spot, the red storm, the like en unspeakably enormous red storm. I feel like you're kind of in like the, the storm winds right now. You're kind of in the storm winds, but remember you are rooted deep. You are rooted so deep. And if you listen to my opening ramblings about, you know, Jupiter making you flexible, right? Flexible by tempering you to make you flexible, which makes you stronger, right? There's a huge message here that your strength comes from your flexibility, right? Your strength comes from your flexibility. Let's finally see what your card is here. Forgiveness. <laughs> Forgiveness. So Jupiter is coming through to invite you to soften those edges, right? What needs forgiving in your life? Where does the forgiveness need to be placed do you need to forgive yourself do you need to forgive others do you need to forgive the entire structure of your reality right the entire universe when you look out at the universe and feel like it is cruel right being able to forgive the entire earth system some of you might be in that situation where you're it's like this cosmic this cosmic frustration right this cosmic despair almost of like I don't understand why any of it is this way right this could go really really deep for some of you guys and that is why it I am keep seeing like the red spot the red storm the red storm Jupiter's enormous red storm feeling like your soul has been in this 
been in this, just been in it, <laughs> been in the struggle for a very, very, very long time and not really seeing the way out. Because imagine if you were lost in an eternal storm. Imagine you were lost in an eternal storm. Or, but it, it only seems eternal, right? Because imagine if you were lost in Jupiter's red spot, in Jupiter's storm. If you just kept walking in one direction, eventually you'd get out of it. But I feel like you guys, um, it's like you, you walk and you walk and you walk in one direction. You work and you work and you work in one direction. And then it feels like you haven't gotten out of the storm yet. So you kind of give up and then turn around. You walk, you walk, you walk, and you don't see any, any, you don't see the results you're looking for. So you give up and turn around. And that's kind of making you spiral and spiral and spiral. Um, so there's this kind of this message of keep going, keep going, keep going in a direction. At this point, any direction is as good as any other. You keep thinking that some other direction is going to be better. With, with this forgiveness thing, maybe you feel like some other job or some other relationship or some other place that you live, like something else, like that's going to be better, that's going to be better, that's going to be better. It's not about that. That that's not the way to look at it. Um, you know, for the guidance coming through in this reading, it's like that's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is, it doesn't actually matter what situation you're in. It doesn't actually matter what relationship you're in. It doesn't actually matter what job you're in. It doesn't actually matter what kind of life path you're on. They can all be good, right? They have different types of potentials and there, there is dif differences about them, but it's kind of like it is what you make it. It is what you make it. And all of the times it didn't work out in the past, that's I think what most of you need to be forgiving. Like just for forgiving the struggle, forgiving all that you have suffered. So, I mean, this is this is big, right? This is big. It's like your soul, it feels like it has just been struggling for an absolutely inordinate amount of time because you guys are very old souls, very old souls. And it's there's this feeling of, why did I do this to myself? Why, why would I have ever done this to myself? Why would I have ever agreed to this? Because you, you guys know, right? You know that that you signed up for this. You guys know that you did that, that like you did this to yourselves. You, you're 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 at that level of you're at that spot on your path, right? You you know that you did this to yourself, but sometimes you can't really understand why. You don't really you don't remember why. And and so big message here of getting reconnected to your why and getting connected with mother earth gaia and specifically i'm hearing like tara tara um getting connected with tara will um can help you with this and when i say tara um so in just in you know tara is obviously another word for the earth right um and in some ways of looking at it gaia is seen as kind of like you know the mother earth figure or you know the 5d 60 70 you know the kind of middle dimensional name for her consciousness and Tara is seen, at least how I see her, is more of like the young woman, right? The young woman um, and more of like the earthly, very earthly, like like an earth spirit, the kind of goddess you would find like running free in the forest um, and looking to party, basically looking to party around the campfire, right? <laughs> looking to have a good time. I connect with Tara a lot and she helps because I find tuning into like the mother Gaia energy is always this, like it puts us in a, almost like a parent child relationship with, with the earth, which is true. <laughs> she is our mother, right? But it, that's not the only relationship that we can have with her, with the earth, right? If you tune into Tara or any of the other earth goddesses, like any of her other guises, faces, manifestations, any of the, the kind of earth goddesses who are kind of younger and about like, about like, younger and more sexual even like younger I was trying I was going to say sensual right but really what I mean is sexual right so interestingly something about uh I mean maybe it's just sacral chakra stuff coming up for you guys or you know really doing some deep healing with your like like anything to do with sex and sexuality or sexual identity for you wow interesting okay <laughs> so this is like <laughs> Um, I'm trying to like th walk the thread back. What does this have to do with Jupiter, right? It's all like connected to the earth, connected to the earth, forgive this entire game. Um, I'm seeing this like pulse of light traveling from like higher realms to the earth, up and down, pulsing and pulsing and pulsing and pulsing. And I feel like there's something 
fragmented like when the energy gets into your root chakra and then down lower down into your earth star chakra it feels a little fragmented um because there's something like not it's like something is short circuiting you know if you have a, an electrical wire that isn't entirely insulated properly or is like bent it'll start sparking that's kind of what's going on with your energy when it hits down into your like lower chakras and into your into your, the earth star and this is really really common like don't beat yourself up about this especially because most of you watching this are probably star seeds <laughs> right um so those wrecked lower chakras is entirely to be expected and is something we all work through um, and then this car jumped out, this panther with movement of swords. This would be the knight of swords. Um, and this is actually getting out to what I was trying to say next about how is this connected to like this message from Jupiter, right? What does Jupiter have to do with it? Um, I'm associating Jupiter here with the crown chakra. So this is very interesting. It's... I, I've been getting this message on and off and I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. So I'm like, I, I, I haven't quite like integrated the lesson here. I haven't quite constructed the frame, like the template of this in my mind. So I'm just going to throw it out there is like, imagine, you know, we think of our chakras being in this like linear line with the crown chakra up top and the root chakra at the bottom, but really nothing's linear, right? So imagine if you folded that around into a circle, you would find that your root and your crown are right next to each other, right? Maybe they're even one thing right? So from a different perspective, your root and your crown are very like closely connected, let's say. Your root and your crown are very closely connected. So if there is something short-circuiting with your like root chakra and your earth star chakra, then that's absolutely affecting your crown chakra. It's li just like this tree, right? Just like this tree. And you know what? Now that I look at this more closely, before I'd said that like rooted into the earth, but look, her roots actually aren't even quite making it to the earth. She, her, her like upper consciousness is all lit up and enormous and going out into the cosmos here, up into the sun, but her roots aren't entirely making it to the earth. She is still rooting herself. She is still rooting herself. So I think that's what you guys are doing. You're still rooting yourself. And if any of you have been really working on your upper chakras, really trying to open your third eye, really doing all of this like stuff, trying to get connected with higher realms and trying to hear your guides more clearly and all that stuff, um, big message here to shift your focus from going up and out of your body and shift your focus to getting into your body and going down into the earth and really getting connected not with mother Gaia, yes but really specifically here with Terra or those type of earth goddesses who are more like youthful and sexy type of thing right and that is it, it's like th that is going to like put the insulation around the, put the electrical tape around the short circuiting wire. I just keep seeing this sparking wire. There's something that needs to be like healed up, healed over and with insulation, with insulation. And the earth is the insulator. Okay. The earth is the insulator. No wonder you're short circuiting because if you're, if your energetic roots aren't quite like rooted into the earth, then they're short circuiting, right? Because it's like a splintered wire and the, the sparks are, are sparking everywhere. So it's like, allow the earth to insulate you, allow the earth to insulate you. And that will like simultaneously improve your connection with higher realms. It's like to go up, go down, right? To go out, go in. Yeah. High priestess. And this is a massive, massive initiation here. Okay. This is a massive initiation here of getting reconnected with, like literally getting your roots reconnected, like, literally getting your roots reconnected. And This is like walking the priestess path. And I mean, if you're not feminine in nature, then it, it doesn't matter, right? It's the priest path or just the path of the mystic, right? The mystic path, whatever you want to call it. Um, walking the path of the mystic, right? Wa walking the path of the mystic. And this is a really interesting initiation for you in this life because in other lives you have walked the path of the mystic, but you have done so with help, right? You, you like with a lot of help, with a lot of support, like in other lives, having been part of like mystery schools, having been an, an initiate of a, like different cults and religions and sects and having and, like sects and having um like this whole community guiding you. And even though, you know, you can still have that in this life, I mean, 
but I, I kind of get the impression that not many of you do. Like you could join a coven, for example, you could find a spiritual group in your location to support you. But really, I think most of you are, are like walking the solitary path of spirituality, like the solitary mystic, and you kind of get most of most of your like spiritual contact online. So it's not very, it's not very grounded, right? It's not very grounded. You, you don't get that spiritual um, stuff happening like with you in the physical. And that might seem like a trial. And it's not really that. It's that you in this life, you, you don't actually need all of that. Um, like, you don't need all that anymore. You don't need to be part of a school. It's like you're, you're, it's not even that you're being homeschooled. It's like you're just schooling yourself. You're teaching yourself because you have all this knowledge inside of you, right? You're walking the path. You're remembering the path as you walk it. You're remembering the path as you walk it. And okay, th this is again, um, I keep coming back. Like, how does it like, how does this come back to Jupiter, right? The whole, the whole Jupiter theme. And I'm seeing, this is about allowing your soul to drop out of the teachings, the spiritual teachings that you have been indoctrinated in in past lives, maybe even in this life, right? If you have um, been more rigid with your spirituality or even religion in this life, then it's that. Or it doesn't even have to be religion, right? It could be like academics, stuff like that. Um, just different ways of thinking. It, Jupiter is like forging you in fire, right? Forging you in fire, heating you up and then cooling you off, <laughs> heating you up and then cooling you off to create flexibility within you and to free you, to free you from the cage of all of these other preconceived ideas. Because even if you've been part, it doesn't matter if it's this life or past lives, even if you've been part of these spiritual groups, I'll just call them spiritual groups. And even if they were benevolent and beautiful and wonderful in every way, they still are limited, right? They're still all limited. They're still not the entire truth. It's only one truth. And, and those spiritual lessons and teachings and ideas, they are relevant for one place in one time. I mean, they could be many places and many times, but not for all places and not for all time, right? So you're really, um, really, really, really being freed from all of that and becoming like a, like a, like a, a flame that just burns with your own purity. This is so that you have this like purity of soul and purity of inner spirituality that is like not just not connected to all of these structures, right? Not not connected to all of these structures and external teachings. It's like you are really meant to have a completely unique, a completely unique spiritual experience and spiritual like identity, like a completely unique spiritual identity in this life, basically, is what this is about. You You are being guided through this whole process of creating an entirely unique spiritual identity to the point where even if you find people that you extremely re like resonate with, you resonate with them so much, but it, you're never going to resonate with them entirely. And that's as it should be. There, there should be no one that you find that you completely agree with everything that they say. There should be no source of guidance that you like completely, completely agree with all the time. It could be like 99.9%, .9%, right? But every once in a while, it's going to be something's like, eh, I don't know, right? That wasn't quite for me. That's as it should be because every single one of you is meant to be this like mystic flame <laughs> to be this mystic flame with a completely unique spiritual identity. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I want to draw this card, but it was sitting there sitting out the whole time. And yeah, it's the magician. <laughs> it's the magician, <laughs> the mystic flame. <laughs> there you go. That just comes out to confirm. So you guys got the high priestess and the magician because you are walking the path of the mystic and becoming the completely unique mystic flame and Jupiter is here forging you into flexibility and uniqueness, right? Flexibility and uniqueness and all of that inner alchemy, taking everything that you have gathered from all of your lives and all of your iterations and blending them together, creating something brand new. So they, they are more than the sum of their parts, right? They're more than the sum of their parts. It's not like you just, it's not like you just take all of the things you have learned in all of your lives and kind of add them together and say, okay, this is what it adds up to. No, you take them all together, you melt them down and you do the alchemy and then you are then you create an entirely new substance that is like nothing anyone has ever seen before and it will be entirely different than uh, no one else can create the same substance right no one else because when, when every single person does their inner alchemy and creates their new self 
the new alchemical substance, it ha it, it is different because it, different ingredients went into it and the alchemical process was different. <laughs> like it's like depending on, you know, just imagine if you're cooking a soup, right? If every single person put all of their ingredients into their soup and then cooked the soup in a different way, which, you know, nobody, even if you mostly just boil the soup and let it simmer, it's still going to be different temperatures, different times, right? It's not going to be exactly the same. So you are all on each individual perfect paths and you have different ingredients that you carry inside of you that you're putting into your alchemical soup and you're cooking it together and it's creating the soup, which is going to be the new you, which is going to be the new you as this mystic flame. And it's going to be entirely unique. And that is the point. That is the point. That is the point. And you'll be able to look around you and see all of these other perfectly unique mystic flames. It's like a bunch of, I'm seeing like a bunch of flames, every flame flickering in a different way, burning with a different temperature, with a different intensity, with a different speed, with a different color, with even like different emanations of sound coming out of the flame. Um, but each just perfectly beautiful and perfect as it is. And just, yes, <laughs> just yes. So <sighs> card number one, I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Okay, card number two. What does Jupiter want to communicate to you guys? I'm feeling like themes of communication, like air energy, Mercury energy, Gemini energy. Um, okay, let me get... relaxation relaxation look at this person completely down to earth in front of the full moon chilling right out in this hammock okay and this um i kind of see why i was feeling gemini energy because gemini is this uh interesting it has like a realness to it right a realness to it a, a, con a connection with reality, connection with personalities, with thoughts, with people that are generated um, in the earth plane, right? In the earth plane. <sighs> Jupiter wants to invite you to focus on what is immediately around you. Like what is immediately around you? This is kind of, this is really interesting because it's kind of the opposite of what you might expect. Because if you think, um, you know, Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Sagittarius is this higher mind and the opposite of Sagittarius is Gemini. Um, but of course, Sagittarius and Gemini are an axis and they cannot be separated from each other. So they are two parts, two ends of one spectrum, right? They are polarity. And I actually feel this like push coming from Jupiter. It's like Jupiter's wanting to like push you down. Um, and hopefully it doesn't feel like you're being squished. <laughs> um, cause that's more of like a Saturnian thing, right? Saturn makes you feel like you're being squished into the ground. That's not the feel I'm getting from Jupiter. Jupiter's like wanting to gently push you into the ground, like gently push you to go on vacation, gently push you to take a time out. Um, this is like really pay attention to your body. If there's anything that is less than 100% comfortable in your body right now, that like listen to that. It is guiding you to do something and it's likely guiding you to slow down or to stop doing something or to alter the way in which you do something. It's probably telling you to do less and you might not like that. Um, but it's like this gentle, this gentle push, this gentle push, gentle nudge to like take a nap. <laughs> emotions and this is to help you balance your emotions and to find that emotional center because um it's like your emotions have driven you out of your body driven you out of your body and okay now i see why i was thinking like communication right There's throat chakra and communication especially uh, like communication with gemini energy there is something for you to communicate with like those literally around you. It could be the people that you live with. It could be the, your friends, your family, like coworkers. It's like literally people that you know in the physical, potentially people you know online, but mostly I think this is like getting into the physical, getting into your local environment. Jupiter's wanting to put you, like bring you back down to earth and put you into your local environment. And I feel like there's like resistance to this. Like you guys don't want to do this. You're, you guys want to be like out of your bodies. You want to be like 
head in the clouds. You know, you want to be flying around in the sky. You probably want to be like astrally traveling. It's like, you know, the, forget this earth thing. I want to like go out there and fly, right? Um, and it's because uh, it's like there is emotion trapped in your body, like emotions stored in your body. And so it is painful at times, not all the time, but sometimes it is painful to be in your body because the emotions are too much. And so you escape them by leaving your body, right? By leaving your body. And that's a very Sagittarius Jupiter type of thing to do, right? To escape by like rising above, by rising above. And that is often the thing to do. So this advice, I feel like you could have a lot of resistance to it, which is understandable and fine. I mean, and if it's really doesn't resonate, then don't listen to it, right? <laughs> but like, I kind of see what's going on here. It's like, you've heard a lot of spiritual teachings that are like, rise above, right? Like, don't focus on the physical, just focus on the spiritual, right? Just like, like, rise above it, go above. And I often have said things like that before. So there's a big message here of some message, some messages are for there and then, and then other messages are for here and now, right? So you, you guys are also learning to work the paradox where understanding that you can receive completely contradictory pieces of advice or spiritual messages or simply ideas from your own mind, completely opposite, completely contradictory ideas at different times, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that one of them is wrong. It means that one idea is from then and there and another idea is for here and now. And it's actually on you to decide like which is which and when is when and what is for me right now. So that is really um, a phrase that might help is like, what is for me right now? What is my message for right now? Right now, right now, today, right now, <laughs> in this exact moment, what, what is for me right now? And I feel like you, you guys, cause you, you have this tendency to like rise up out of your bodies and to see this bigger perspective, which is so beautiful. And you don't want to like, and you're not going to lose that, right? It's like, I'm, I don't want to say that, I don't want you to think that I'm saying you should lose that. It's not that because you're, it's impossible. You, you're, you're like unable to lose your higher perspective, right? Um, but it's like to get really focused on the now, to get really focused on the now, because if you're always rising above and seeing the bigger perspective, it can get really confusing. It can get very, 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 very confusing. And then you don't know what is for right now because you kind of get lost in the big picture um, and you get lost in all of the different like pieces of advice that you've ever heard. I don't know, like for some of you, it might be different people have given you all these different pieces of advice. Like you remember when you're 18 and you're trying to figure out what to do with the rest of your life and everybody and their uncle like has, is telling you what to do with your life and like what school to go to and how to go to school or whether you should do this instead of going to school and blah. And like everybody has an opinion about it and it gets so overwhelming. It's like, what am I like? <laughs> oh my God, right? Like everybody has an idea and everyone's trying to tell me what to do. And so at, at some point you just have to stop listening to everybody and you only listen to yourself and just do what you want to do, right? This is kind of like that, or it could be that some of you have really been going deep into all of these different spiritual teachings, reading different books, like seeing different, um, following different teachers and gurus and stuff. And then it, you kind of look at it and go, well, I don't know, <laughs> like what? Like uh, sometimes they contradict each other. And even though they all kind of resonate, I just don't know, I don't know how to put it all together. And it's like, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Just what is for you right now? What is for you right now? And drop into this relaxation. And when you're in this relaxed state, I mean, if you can, if you can get there, I know like getting relaxed isn't necessarily an easy thing to do, but if you can find yourself in a relaxed state, that has to be step one here is to relax. And step two is going to be to communicate some emotions. Um, for a lot of you, I really think that there is some kind of something you need to express to somebody, right? It could be in your relationship, something that's just been festering, festering, festering. And it, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it's just like, why won't your partner take out the garbage when you ask them, right? If it's something that's like, you know, it could be something like little like that, or it could be something huge about something that you just can no longer tolerate in your life. Like, what do you no longer want to tolerate? There's something that needs to be expressed about your emotions. And it's like, don't allow people to tell you that you're too sensitive because so your sensitivity is a blessing because your sensitivity allows you to stop putting up with crap that you shouldn't have to put up with. <laughs> so um, it's like, I think one of the reasons that you, you, are not always in your body as much as you could be is that there are things in your environment that you have been tolerating that you shouldn't have to tolerate. And it, it might take a massive act of self transformation and courage in order to kind of look at something in your life and say, I shouldn't have to put up with that. Um, but it's like, 
that's <laughs> kind of where this is going. And it's interesting because that was the feeling that I experienced yesterday when Jupiter moved into Aries. And I, I, I actually, cause I was having like quite a moment. I was having like, it was so intense energetically. I was having a whole purge and a whole meltdown. It was nuts. And I remember I was like screaming at like at the, at the wall, like, this is my life. This is my life. This is my life. That is the feeling of Jupiter and Aries. So especially for anybody who happens to watch this while Jupiter is in Aries, which is going to be most of um, like summer of 2021 and then the end of 2021 and early 2022, right? It's, it's going to, Jupiter's going to retrograde back into Pisces, but anyway, for a little bit. Um, but anyway, so anyone who has some kind of connection with Jupiter and Aries, it, it's like, this is my life. This is my life. That That's the feeling um, that, that you're actually being invited to cultivate here. And some of you might feel that that is selfish or that is bad or that you're supposed to be of service to the greater good and that everything has to be about the collective. And that's, that's coming back to this thing of like letting all of these like wise teachings that are all, that have truth and that are beautiful and that you often want to follow, right? Allowing all of these different pieces of advice and allowing all these different pieces of ideas and teachings and whatnot. It's like, it's getting you all muddled and confused <laughs> and it's like, come back to that. This is my life. This is my life. So I think for you, for this moment, for literally this exact moment, this is my life. That is that is the, the feeling for you to sit in, right? This is my life. And then communicate what it is about your life that you need to communicate to others. <laughs> and it is through the portal of your own self. It is through the portal of your own life that you connect to the universe. You There might be this feeling of connecting with the universe by subjugating the self or by inverting the self or by sacrificing the self, you know, through martyrdom, right? You guys definitely have had lives where you have been literal martyrs in, in this life. You have sacrificed in one way or another, right? But it's like, that's not the way. That's not the way. This um, timelines and experiences of martyrdom and sacrifice and of like loss and giving up and of even even ideas of selfless service, right? Even ideas of selfless service, those are ideas of the dissension cycle. <laughs> we're, we're done with the, the dissension cycle, right? If you're watching this, you are done with your dissension cycle. You on your, you are on your ascension cycle and you ascend by putting your energy back into yourself. And that doesn't mean that you're abandoning the collective. That is actually how you serve the collective. If you want to do whatever, if you, I know you all want to be, you are all here. You are literally here. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to help the collective consciousness, right? That is literally why you are here. And you will do that by igniting your own flame, by being your own spark, and by going through the portal of your own soul, your own self. It's like <laughs> the portal to the universe is through the self. The portal to the universe is through the self. That That's the message here. <laughs> that's the message here. So that's why it is my life. It is my life. Why that is such a... <sighs> Why that is the phrase, that is the phrase right now. This is my life and how like really feel into that. How valuable is your life? How committed are you to your life? And then just trust and just know and eventually you will start to see, you will eventually start to understand. Ask the universe to show you, ask your soul, ask your soul to, to show you, ask your soul, ask your, <laughs> getting a little tongue tied. Ask your soul to show you how committing to yourself is the best thing that you can do for everyone else. You, you will start to see. Um, I could go on a big rant explaining that, but it will be much more powerful if you actually start to see that in your own life. It's like really, it's important for that lesson to come from within and from your own observations and from your own feelings. It's like do an experiment, right? Just start committing to yourself. Start expressing what you need to express, right? Commit to your own relaxation. Commit to your own emotional expression. Also in like your creative pursuits, right? And commit to experiencing the universe through the portal of your own self, through the portal of the self. And then it, it will become clear very quickly. I, I like literally like, it could be a matter of hours once you commit to this experiment of committing to yourself, committing to the development and, and enrichment of your own life. You will start to see how that domino effects out that ripples out and that ends up being the best thing for everyone, everyone else. So that is how you have your cake and eat it too. That is how you have the life experience that you want to have. And that is how you help the entire universal collective consciousness by committing to the self, by living your life, right? The portal to the universe is through the self. 
that's what I want to leave you with. So sending you so much love and light, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, this is card number three. Let's see what Jupiter would like to communicate. <laughs> Focus. Focus with this beautiful, amazing snow leopard. Okay, so um, just to start, I'm guided to read you from the book on this one. Mountains traditionally represent transcendence and spiritual evolution. They also symbolize rising above mundane situations and reaching greater heights. The snow at the peak represents pristine clarity. Mountain peaks are often the destination of spiritual pilgrimages. Many cultures believed that the tops of mountains were the resting points of the gods and celestial beings. The sacred landscape wants you to know. What you focus on is what you pull to pull to you. So put your attention on that which is worthwhile. Concentrate on one desire. Direct your intent to one thing rather than being scattered in many directions. When your thoughts and actions are unfocused, it dilutes and diminishes your forward movement. It is much easier to gain results when you are concentrating on one path. Gather your inner resources and with intensity and passion, go forward and upward. You'll see results. This is also a card of spiritual transcendence and traveling to higher realms. So stay focused as you elevate your higher consciousness. You are close to heavenly realms. Wow, I am feeling that pulsate in my third eye like so hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whoa. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little bamboozled by the energy in my... I'm sensing like in my, the middle of my forehead, very like physically. Uh, let me get some cards out. Two of cups, heart to heart. Nine of cups, wish come true. And four of wands, the beautiful, happy home. Wow. Um, there's also the, the six of swords at the bottom, this card of transition. So interesting. feel like you guys are trying to manifest either like a relationship or a a like a house like either a relationship or a new home environment this is like your nest this is like trying to nest you're trying to create the life where you feel like you have a home where you feel like you have the family that you desire like the support in the physical that you desire whether it's friends family a partner like whatever right this is like building your nest builds building your castle and i'm seeing like a castle in the sand that's getting hit by waves as if you feel like you have like lost over and over and over again like like you built your castle in the sand and then the wave came and this is every time you build up every time you build up it the waves come crashing down i think that's why there's this message of Focus, 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 um, focus on like the here and now focus on what you are building right now. Don't let those distractions from like, don't let the past distract you, right? Don't let the past distract you because <laughs> all this beautiful energy coming through, right? Six of cups or sorry, two of cups. Wow. What? Oh, I said six of cups because I was looking over here at the six of swords. So the six of swords is literally the energy of like movement and transition. If anybody is trying to like literally move homes, get a new house get a new apartment, move to a new country, whatever, like that's happening, right? This is a time of shifting and transition for you. And it's bringing you together heart to heart with something, right? Is this heart to heart with yourself? Is this connection with higher self? Is this you and a person, right? Is this your person? Whatever it is, guys, nine of cups wish come true. <laughs> nine of cups wish come true. And here we have <laughs> the four of wands, which I like to call like the, the party castle card, right? This is the happy home. This is a solid foundation that is like not restrictive. It is free and, and it ignites your soul. It is the place you want to be. The four of wands is where you want to be. It's exactly where you want to be. That's what's coming, right? You're, you're manifesting this wish come true. And I'm really drawn, but look at these two sunflowers, one stem. I mean, they are two different flowers, but it's like they're conjoined at the stem. So somebody is definitely trying to manifest <laughs> a relationship here. Um, but you know, this could definitely also play out with the you looking to meld with your higher self. And really it's probably both, 
<laughs> you know, no matter which way you're looking at it, there is the, like, it's happening on the level of consciousness and it's also reflecting on the human level. So just know that it, that this is like the 3D mirror coming into play. You're working on this on two levels simultaneously, but it's actually, okay, so there's a lot of things coming through. Um, like random messages that I've been receiving, I am feel like passing on to you. So one of the messages has been, Moving from duality to plurality, from duality to plurality, duality to plurality. It's like we used to, <laughs> it's almost like the entire, and I just saw 4444 was on the camera. <laughs> so, um, you know, we think we have this whole concept of duality and non-duality, right? And this is something I'm still just feeling into and, you know, so I, I don't have the whole picture on this yet, but that's the message. Moving from duality to plurality. So moving from the idea of there being two things to there being like a whole multitude of things, a whole plurality of things. If you used to think of things in black and white, of yin and yang, right? It's like, yes, but not necessarily. It's like, yes, but yes and. Yes, and there is so much more. It's like if you imagine the yin yang like cracking open like an egg, what would come out? Like a whole bunch of stuff. Like it, it's not just two things. It's a whole plurality of things. Um, interesting that 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 would come out <laughs> um, for for this. Okay, you got balsamic moon, a time for healing. This is healing from black and white thinking. Healing from black and white thinking. You used to see things in good or bad. You used to see things as even seeing things as masculine and feminine, right? Being limited by that duality of gendered language. Um, See, seeing things as like should and shouldn't I think that is a like a manifestation of duality that we don't talk about nearly enough because we think that we should or we shouldn't we should or we shouldn't do something but that's not really the case it's do whatever you want and know that you can make either option work right do whatever you want and you can make either option work and there was always secret option three and secret option four and five and six and seven there's always more opportunities so there, there's So it's like, pick. This actually message was coming out for the first pile as well. So this is apparently just like a, this is a different way of presenting this kind of same idea that Jupiter is really kind of harping on, where it's pick a direction and go in it. Pick a direction and go for it. Pick a direction and go for it. Um, if there's decisions you're trying to make, know that it doesn't actually matter which decision that you make. There is no right and wrong. There is no best decision. There is no best option. And sometimes in the past, you might look at your past and go, oh, I wish I would have made the opposite decision because I, you you might feel like you made the wrong decision. It's like, why didn't I cash out those investments then? Or, you know, I, I missed out or, or, oh, like, I wish I sh hadn't cashed out on those investments then. I would have had so much more money or, oh, I shouldn't have broke up with that person or I should have taken that job. And it's like, blah, 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 blah. You could do that forever. It's like, knock that off. <laughs> right? that, that's, that's not me telling you that. That's, you know, the, the channeled message telling you that. It's like, because that, that whole thing of looking at the past and going, shoulda, 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 shoulda done this, shouldn't have done that. That is this distraction. And that's why you got this focus card, right? That's why you got this focus card. It's focus. Stop thinking about what you should have done or shouldn't have done. Like never in your head, it, it, <laughs> never again, never again. If you could entirely drop out of should and shouldn't because it's moving out of duality into plurality. There's just so many more things. <laughs> and it's really easy in hindsight to look and go, if I had made the opposite choice, there would have been a better outcome. But like, you don't know that, <laughs> right? You don't know that. It could, you Maybe you did get the best outcome. Maybe the other outcome would have been even worse. Maybe, the, maybe it was like the same. Maybe it would have just been the same, right? That's something that I've really been noticing in my life is that sometimes it feels like it doesn't matter what I do because things just kind of work out kind of like however they're going to work out. <laughs> and, and so I used to get kind of down on that going like, oh, it doesn't matter what I do and get all like annoyed, right? But what if it really doesn't matter what you do because what if things work out the way they're supposed to work out out no matter what you do so what if you're sitting there going I don't know if I should pick a b c or d what if it doesn't matter like literally what if you just pick any of them and it's just going to kind of work itself out and you're going to end up with roughly the same outcome yeah sure maybe like each option will be slightly different right like one will maybe have a little bit more money one will maybe take a little bit more time one will take one will have maybe a little bit more enjoyment in it but at the end of the day it's all going to be like basically the same and you're not really going to like care about the small differences that much so like what if it really just doesn't matter what you do because everything's just kind of working out the way it's going to work out anyway right 
<laughs> yeah, full moon in Capricorn. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon. Everything is working out. You're approaching that full moon. And the Capricorn full moon is that complete culmination. And interesting, you know, talking about all the stuff about the home and relationships and family earlier, that's really Cancer energy, right? And Capricorn is the opposite of Cancer. Capricorn moon comes in Capricorn season. It, like, the Capricorn full moon in Cancer season is the culmination of whatever your family like concern is, right? If you're looking for safety, if if you're if it's the Cancer season, people can often feel very emotional and very concerned and worried about their families. And when the Capricorn full moon comes around, it's like, well, that is now resolved, right? That is now resolved because that Capricorn energy comes in to bring that stability and those answers and that assurance. Um, if you've been struggling financially or just struggling with stability, the Capricorn full moon comes in and completes that cycle and gives you the stability you've been looking for, right? The Four of Wands, the stability. So don't lose your focus now right don't lose focus now the end of a tough cycle approaches somebody really needs to hear that right the end of a tough cycle approaches you're going to be at the top of the mountain oh my god yeah both these cards this is you know this this snow leopard here talks about this mountain landscape climbing to the top of the landscape to be in communication with the gods right Cap that's what capricorn does the sea goat climbs to the top of the mountain and reaches the peak and that is the end of the tough cycle this is like a climax there's a climax coming for you in your manifestation your materialization of whatever it is that you desire and it's just focus fo uh, focus in it i think this is less about focusing on a specific outcome i don't i don't really this doesn't really feel entirely like law of attraction type of thing where you have to like focus on your vision board and like manifest that specific thing into reality it's not really like that this feels more like just focus your thoughts on the thoughts that are useful to you. Focus your emotions on emotions that make you feel good, right? Um, don't allow your mind, I mean, and this is easier said than done, right? It's like I consider and say, yeah, don't like think about all your past mistakes. I know that's like easy for me to say, but obviously it's, it's not easy for me to do either. This is something I've also been really working on. And um, it's, it's funny. I feel like back in 2020, uh, 2021 even, I had more luck dropping out of my mental body and I was able to sit in mindfulness a lot more. And for whatever reason, this year, 2022, so far my mind has been more scattered. And, uh, but just, just yesterday, just yesterday as Jupiter moved into Aries, I think that is really shifting for us. It, I certainly felt it. I felt like suddenly I could focus, right? Suddenly I could focus on thoughts that were useful to me and suddenly I could drop out of all of those scattered thoughts, especially all those shoulds and shouldn'ts have from the past. So this is just focus your focus your awareness, right? Focus your awareness on the moment. Focus your awareness on right here, right now. Focus on one, putting one step right in front of the other, right? And know that the end of the tough cycle is approaching. Know that the end of a tough cycle is approaching. And I want to get one final card. It's like, focus on what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing. I've had my eyes closed, just in case you're wondering. And this is the card. Enter the flow. Here you are on your boat. <laughs> See? Doesn't really matter what you do. Your Things are just going to work out the way they're going to work out. Imagine you're in a river, right? You're going down the river in a boat. You can steer the boat. You can struggle with the boat. You can try to put the boat up river. You can navigate and, and struggle all you want. or <laughs> But the river is going to go where the river is going to go. That's it. The river's going where it's going. So it doesn't really matter how much you steer the boat. You're still going to get to the end of the river, right? <laughs> you're still going to get to where you're going no matter how you handle it, basically. There are myriads of options available to you. Yeah, exactly. From duality to plurality. Even if you feel rushed to act fast, you'll be better able to make a long-lasting and confident decision by heeding the voice of your soul. Long-lasting and confident, guys. It's Capricorn full moon energy. You can either step back and wait, inquire and consider, or meditate and pray, or you can push ahead in harried hopes that it will all work out. Things do tend to come together in the end, but to avoid a dramatic situation that later requires an unraveling, look at all of your choices. Then, exercise the many different ways you can express yourself. Feel how liberating it is to make a new choice and to sail past ingrained habitual responses instead of reacting. Once you've made an intentional choice, lie back and be carried by the winds of flow in your greatest hope for direction. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> universe, for bringing through that perfect card that sums up what I was trying to say about 
It doesn't really matter what you do, right? It doesn't really matter what you choose. Just keep moving forward in whatever way you can best figure out how to do in the moment and just trust that the river's gonna take you to the end of the river. Just really remember that you are in a river. And yes, you can navigate your course in the river. You can be closer to the left bank, closer to the right bank. You can steer around an island. You can bump into the island and then, you know, back out of it, right? You can crash into logs, you can navigate around the logs, but it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you're gonna to get to the end of the river, you're gonna to get to where you're going. It's all gonna work out. You're already in the flow of consciousness, you're already in the stream of consciousness. Just focus on what you're doing, focus on steering your boat as best you can. It doesn't matter how you steered your boat yesterday, just steer your boat as best you can today and you're gonna to get to where you're going, guaranteed. So I love you guys, sending you so much love and light, bye.